Welcome to the GTP. My name is Scott where we talk all things manga. In this video I'm excited to share with you my manga haul for the month of March of over 65 titles. Now you might be asking Scott that is a lot of manga and yes yes you're right and the main reason why we have so much is that 39 of these titles came recently from a Crunchyroll order. That order I'm going to make a separate video for explaining what happened as I have waited four months for some of these titles and they finally came in. And we'll also discuss <laughs> what I learned in this process and how I'm feeling about manga overall as it felt a little overwhelming having this giant stack of everything that came in and many many of those titles were ones I wanted to read right away. So with that said, I'd love to know in the comments below, what did you either read or pick up this past month? As you know, in these videos, I only share, not only share what I picked up, but why and the ones I read, I love to give a little bit synopsis, whether or not, how do I feel about the series as I continue to read it. So as you're learning from me, I wanna learn from you since this is a community together. So with that said, let's go ahead and start with ongoing or missing titles that I picked up from Viz Media with the first being Comey Can't Communicate Volume 28. Now what I love about this series, it's such a cozy series and I already had many laughed out loud moments when I was reading this one. And it looks hard deceiving here as you're seeing Comey in the sauna here and you're like, oh my. Well, it's actually not Comey in the sauna, but her lovely, I want to say, Tandoro is actually the one that is in the sauna and he goes with some of Comey's let's say closest family members. So it's, yeah, I thought it was interesting. We're showing Komi and Sony here, but maybe they thought it didn't went sell as well if you saw a bunch of dudes in the sauna together, but it, it was a very good volume 28, still laugh out loud. It's one of my favorite series, highly recommend. I don't know why you haven't checked out if you haven't already. Next, I picked up volume seven and volume eight of Health. And this is a little embarrassing. I didn't know this until after volume eight that all the volumes come together and you get this really cool mural going on. So I sent put a picture online of all the volumes together so far. I, I kind of not like that it's all long ways. I wish we had some that were gonna be like this or like this. So give me more of a square, kind of like they did with Monster, but they have not done that. But I thought that was really cool. I didn't know they come together. I'm still thoroughly enjoying the series and it's only 12 volumes total. I'm very impressed with how fast Viz has just come on and continue to give us these volumes since the series started in like January next year. So we're one year in and we're already at volume eight, which means we'll probably have the rest of the series by the end of this year. Now, if you're like, Scott, what is Hulk? Well, you end up learning that the Demon King has has passed away, he's no longer alive as he's been overtaken, and now the demons are trying to figure out how are they gonna make it again. Well, Wiz, what do you do with that situation? Why well, you have a tournament, and what happens in that tournament is the demons fight, and then whoever's the strongest, they get to be the next king. I mean, that makes sense, right? Well, what happens when a human enters that tournament, and he's actually better than the demons, and he ends up, every people fall in love with him. That's what this story about Helk ends up starting with. And it's just been a very good story as continued to unfold. And it's gone in a direction I never expected, but I've thoroughly enjoyed. It has a lot of good world building. It's been a very good story. And with 12 volumes total, it's, it's just incredible for how they're wrapping things together. So it's one I can't recommend enough. Next I picked up was Kaiju number eight, volume nine. And I was so glad that this one actually had a lot more dialogue as some of the other volumes I felt like it took me 20 minutes to read. It was just action panel after action panel. You know, Kaiju is you follow this main character whose dream is to work alongside this one girl they grew up together. The problem is that he's at the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to working in this organization and she's at the top as she's skilled and talented. And he hopes one day to be able to match her and be able to be together as equal. So it has been so good. I'm man right now volume nine this is the best volume net i'm just completely sucked into the story wanting to know what's going to happen next it's on such a strong arc as it just seems everything that you could imagine to go wrong is going wrong and how are they going to make it through this next mission so very very good i know the anime is about to stream i my guess is probably going to be one of the most popular animes currently out for this spring next i picked up blue box volume eight and i also picked up volume nine and wow volume nine alone if you 
have not read the series, you need to pick it up as it's a sports manga and kind of this romantic comedy. But volume nine got me so emotional and just feeling for one of the characters. What, and we probably have all gone through this where you, there's this person that you absolutely love, that you care for, and you want to be with that person, but that person doesn't want to be with you and you've done everything right. It's a situation where you've done everything you can to be the best version of yourself. You're positive, you're, you're taking care of your body, you're fit. People tell you how beautiful you are, how kind you are as a person. The world, not only the closest friends, but the world has accepted you and everything is right. But the person you want to be with the most, you just, for some reason, that person doesn't feel the same way. And the author did such a good job conveying those emotions that just, oh, it just really stuck at the heart. It makes me want to do video just talking about volume nine and what is it like when we go through those emotions and how do we handle that? And Blue Box, I've said it before, the artwork is so impressive. This is probably one of my favorite series that's currently ongoing. I would say it's in my top 10 of ongoing series. I just, wow. They are doing such a good job with this. I just, uh, I got so emotional and you could, you could feel the weight of the panel and it's something that we can all relate to in a story. Next I picked up was Black Clover Volume 34. This is supposed to be the last arc in the story. It's really phenomenal as we're now seeing more of the backstory of the main character's teacher and just we're now from in the land where he came from. So it was a very good volume. It's it's Black Clover, it's Take It Away. I think it's had ups and downs as a story, but I'm still enjoying the story. I'm excited to see how <laughs> the story finally just wraps up. The volume before this, my jaw dropped. You're like, oh my gosh, what is happening? I thought about this about this person, but this person's now like this. And everything I thought to be true, is it even true anymore? So the author does a phenomenal job with the story. If you're hooked already, I, from 33 and on, you're probably still reading this, but. I've thoroughly enjoyed Black Clover. If you're wondering if it's for you, I will say it took me the first seven or eight volumes for me to get hooked into the story and then it clicked. Before that, I was actually iffy and I almost dropped the series, but I'm so glad I did it. Next, I picked up was Fly Me to the Moon, volume 21 and volume 22. This is from the same author that gave us Hayete the Combat Butler. This is an adult romantic comedy. Instead of following people before they get married, wondering if they're ever gonna get together, you get to follow the life of these characters that, hey, they're married and now they're con going on and continuing their life. What is it like just now being married? So if that's something that interests to you, it's one to go ahead and check out. Next I picked up was Mashal volume 15. This is the uh, Harry Potter meets One Punch Man series. So you have this comedy series, you have the action, going all together and battling out versus muscle versus magic. Next I have is My Hero Academia volume 37. Now people say there's spoiler warnings with this cover here. I didn't see it as spoiler warnings. It just sees his friend is hurt. Is he hurt very badly? Yes, but doesn't mean he is dead or alive. This is Wow, very, very good. I just, uh, the emotional impact with this story. I love My Hero Academia. It wasn't my, wasn't my top 10. I think it's now in my top 20 stories. It, it just really grips you together. And the author has done such a good job. Not only do we see the side through the, the heroes, but also understanding the villains. Being able to connect to the villains in an emotional way where you, at least you understand why they are the way that they are. And it, so it's just been such a fun journey. I love this story and I cannot wait to see what happens on the final arc. Next up I picked up is Dandadan Dan Volume 6. This is a story, what happens when you take a bet on someone telling them that ghosts are real and they don't believe you and the other person believes that aliens are real. And then what happens when you find out that ghosts and aliens actually both exist. Now you follow these two main characters that are in high school and other people join them along the way and now they're using their powers to fight ghosts and aliens at the same time. So it's been a very entertaining series, has some of the best current artwork I've seen 
in a Viz Media title, so I'm thoroughly enjoying it. It did take me a couple of volumes to get into the series, but it's one of the stories as each volume I've read has gotten better. Definitely not for kids, as you see here, we have this lovely parental advisory and I would agree with that rating. Next I picked up is One Punch Man volume 27. Now this is a very comedy series with some action and the artwork is so impressive. If you've seen Eye Shield, it's a, it's the same author but wow I just love love the artwork. It's just thoroughly impressive to see that the, the artwork alone is as well as you're just laugh so many laugh out loud moments as you're following this main character who's so strong he can destroy anyone with just with one punch but he just kind of wants to live an everyday life and just gets annoyed and he's trying to just get rid of these monsters so that way he can continue on now this arc that they're in it feels like they've been in forever i'm well i'm waiting for them to get out of this arc but because the series doesn't continue on weekly in regular chunks on Viz Media. Because of that, we don't get these volumes as well. It seems like every two, three, three or even four months we get a new One Punch Man volume, but every time I come back to the series, I'm laughing out loud, I'm enjoying it. Now there isn't as much dialogue, which for some people are looking for more of an action series with some haha -ha moments without dialogue. This will definitely be one you'll want to check out. Next I picked up was Call of the Night volume 15. I absolutely love this vampire series as you're following this main character who can't sleep. And then while walking around the town, he ends up meeting a vampire. I actually have a review of the series. If you click the right hand corner, you can see my review of Call of the Night, but it is a very good vampire series and almost more like a slice of life vampire with a little bit of action and comedy sprinkled through in. But we, it's sad to know we're end of closing of our journey as a series just finished digitally in January. We're in volume 15. There will be 20 volumes in total of this series, but I thoroughly enjoyed the series and I just continued and cannot wait to find out what's going to happen next. Next is a series I've been waiting to be reprinted for a while, and this is volume six of my love story. Now I've think I'm only missing volume five and then I'll have the entire series. And I think five was just recently reprinted as well. I'm just not sure when that order is going to ship as I got it from Right Stuff Anime, which I was surprised that Right Stuff Anime is from Crunchyroll is the one that shipped this for me. So that was a surprise. I've heard nothing but good things about this shoujo story. So this is one of those ones that's on my shortlist once I get the last volume. Speaking of, I think they're doing reprints maybe is I also got from that Right Stuff order Kakeshi volume six as I ordered the entire series before Viz Media was gonna increase the prices. And this is another one that I'm missing now. I'm still missing, I think seven more volumes out of the 36 that were available. I. I want to say it's 11 or maybe 17. There's a volume that's over $100 online, which I don't want to pay for a series that should be reprinted anyway. So I hope this is a sign that Viz Media is reprinting the series, even though this is a, it's a first printing is the volume I got of this. But hey, we'll see what happens. I'm, this is one that I've just, I've wanted to read for a long time. And it was interesting is it even has the old V on it, which we haven't seen for a long time as they have definitely updated their logo many times after this, but it still looks flawless. I wonder if they have like a couple cargo ships of cargo containers of just old volumes that they're just holding. And when a reprint happens, they'll just release them all at once. So I always think it's interesting when Viz Media reprint something is that we see older volumes come in as well as a new printing of it. And next, I'm so happy speaking of the right stuff, anime stuff I've ordered a very, very long time ago. This one, I think over two years, this is Cross Game Volume 7. Now I think I'm only missing Volume 6 now and I'll have the whole series. and. Uh, this is a baseball series. I've just I've wanted to read this for so long. I've heard nothing but beautiful things about this story and I almost a little blown away that we're getting this. So uh, they did increase the prices for it, but this is one of the older printing. So it still has that lovely $14.99, even though I think it's now $17 or $18.99 for the series, a 20% increase. But hey, if you can find this series, it's one I would recommend checking out for yourself. I just I've heard nothing but good things. So once I grab the the last, you get the last one. This will also be on that short list of things I just want to read right away. Next, I picked up was Spy X Family Volume Eleven. This was a much needed read, meaning that I was kind of down that day and feeling kind of sad. And I, this this one had many laugh out loud moments 
to the point that I was bothering my wife next to me as I was interrupting her reading her story as I was just <laughs> laughing so, so much. It was so funny, so good. If you're looking for a spy action comedy series, this is probably one of the best comedy series that's currently out, period. Next, I picked up this volume 29 of Separate of the End. This is a vampire series. Have I read the series? No, I have not. But Scott, you have 29 volumes. Why haven't you read the series? Well, it's not that we're missing anything. It's just I got a lot of it all at once and we'll have another video where I'm discussing, hey, I have all this backlog manga and what do we do about it? Next I picked up is Dark Gathering Volume 5 and I got Volume 6. I am behind on the series as I've only read the first volume and then I was missing Volume 2 for a while. It finally got shipped from a company that is now going into bankruptcy, which um, is always a bummer. Um, but then I end up getting the other volume, so I was just waiting for volume two. That came in a couple hauls ago, and I just haven't picked up the series again. I need to, because if we're going to volume six, I want to see, is this a series I really want to keep reading if I'm going to go and spend money, especially because these are now the increased price from Viz Media. So yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, the first volume I thought was interesting, following this main character that can handle exorcism with spirit. So it looks intriguing. It almost had that horror esque feel to it. It's very creepy volumes, but it was good. And I got to say, man, they're doing a really great job. We're not supposed to judge a book by its cover, but if I was going to judge a book by its cover, I think these covers look pretty rad. Next I picked up is Moriarty the Patriot volume 14. Have I read the series? No, I have not. Do I have the whole series? Why? Yes, I do. Why haven't we read this? Well, I knew Viz Media is going to be increasing their prices and I wanted to get this series just for that affordability. Should I be picking up the new volumes even though I haven't read the old ones? Probably not, even though the price has now increased for these and we're now paying that full expensive price for it. So this is a Sherlock Holmes story. I've heard okay things and I've heard great things about it. So it's just one that I need to go ahead and start reading. Next, I picked up some people's favorite anime of this last winter and that is Undead Unluck Volume 14. I end up picking the whole series on a really good sale and then we're just continuing to picking up the story from even though it's increased. So what do I think about this series? Well, I stopped reading it, so I actually need to go ahead and reread it again and continue with the volumes as actually I'm playing catch up and discover is this a series that I want to continue? I was just so turned off at first from especially the first volume that I didn't want to read the story. But I heard it's actually phenomenal now. It's one of the better shown jump series that are currently Next, I picked up Kobu Won't Let Me Become Invisible, volume 11, and the last volume, volume 12, the final volume. Why did I pick up the series? Well, I picked up the series because of that Viz Media price increase, and I got all the volumes, I think, except for the last two that had that price increase. So I've heard good things about it. I thought for 12 volumes only, it's one that would be just a cute uh, romantic comedy to pick up. So because of that, I got these last two volumes. I believe the anime's out, and I think it did well. So yeah, we'll see. It's so one we definitely like that lovely backlog we have that eventually we'll need to check out in only 12 volumes. Next I picked up was Boys Abyss Volume 4. Now this story I have a bit of a love-hate relationship as I kind of want to drop the series. It's a little too edgy for me at the same time I just I can't turn away at the horror, the horrificness and I want to know what's going to happen next. This is definitely not for kids and it reminds me, it gives me similar vibes of Goodnight Pun Pun. So if you're looking for a story that gives you those similar vibes on how do you handle where there is no hope, how do you continue to get by? And usually the answer is you find hope. But unfortunately, instead of finding hope, things just get worse and worse. And as soon as the main character gravitates to someone that could help them understand things or feel better, it just continues to get downhill. And now that person's taking advantage of him. And then another person is taking advantage and vice versa. And it's just take, take, and take. And you wonder what's going to happen. How are they going to come out of this? So it's very, very tragic. And at the same time, there seems to be a bright little, little bit of light. You're like, oh, is it finally going to turn around? And nope, it ends up getting worse again. So I'm very intrigued. I want to continue at the same time. I just, it, it's too dark in some of those ways. Uh, some of the especially some of the adult images and content are just absolutely not necessary and just it feels like it's thrown in there just to be thrown in there but that's where of the series i'm feeling very conflicted even talking about it right now so yeah i'm not sure it's like a train wreck that you don't want to look away even though you know you should so i guess that would probably be the best way i can explain 
boys a bit. Next up, let's talk about a more happier series, and that is Asomniacs in After School Volume 5. This is a slice of life series. They're following these two characters that are part of the astronomy club who have trouble sleeping at night, and this was a beautiful volume five. This is that story where you just want to snuggle up with a blanket, have a good hot hot cup of coffee or tea, and just read. I felt so good after reading this volume. Immediately wanted to pick up the sixth volume even though it's not out yet. I think there's 14 volumes in total from Japan of this series, but I have thoroughly enjoyed the Slice Life series following the, the high school antics of these two characters and watching them as they grow up as well as the relationship they develop together. Next up is my favorite popcorn series, meaning that you leave your brain to the side and just eat some popcorn and just enjoy some battle. And that is Record of Ragnarok Volume 9. Now these are very fast reads, but if you're looking for a story where like, I just want a good battle manga where I just see tons of fighting and then a little bit of backstory of the people and why they're fighting and how they get there, this is that story for you as the gods have decided that humanity isn't worth existing anymore and what do you do is the humans decide to have a tournament against the gods and now the best humans versus the best gods are fighting it out whoever wins the tournament gets to decide whether or not humanity is going to continue or not so again if there's a lot of answers here like what is going on but for some reason it's just a guilty pleasure series so a good a good popcorn series if it's almost like watching transformers it's not you know it's not good but you are there for the action anyways if you're looking for a story like that then you're gonna like record of Ragnarok. next i picked up was the last volume of golden kamoi volume 31 and oh such a good series now i did a video of just if you click the eye on the right hand corner you can go ahead and check out my review of golden kamoi now i've read the entire series and i'll say the entire journey is worth it and this was a phenomenal last volume i deeply cared about the characters the action is incredible the pacing they did such a good job wrapping up this series where i i felt very whole after reading it where some some endings you want a little more or you feel like what were they thinking or you feel like they took a bit of you and just crushed it like they did with the show lost they did not do that as i felt very good with the end this was a great last volume wrapping up the entire story next i picked up was the last volume of alice in borderland volume nine now before this i did watch the entire netflix show which is very good but i did finish reading this as well and this also was a very good ending to the story. Now, after watching Alice in Borderland Netflix, I kind of wish I waited a little bit uh, to read this as it kind of spoiled the ending a bit as they're very similar. But at the same time, this Netflix has a little bit of twist that is not in this. So I think they even announced uh, season three, which I don't know what they're going to do for that. I just I hope it's good, especially if they're now deviating from the book. But this was a very good series. It's 18 volumes whole. Technically, these are two in one. If you put all the spines together, you get a really cool picture of a city, but it was a very good, this post-apocalyptic survival battle series. Uh, wow, just the mystery, how they unfold the mystery, you just, it felt wholesome, concluded at the end. I guess not wholesome, as it was very tragic, but I felt very good at the ending. I didn't feel like I was missing a chunk of me. So I recommend this series. Again, it's definitely not for kids as you're, you know, battling to the death, but they did a very good job with the series and it made you think and the author had just had a good ending. So that is Alice in Borderland. And last from Viz Media, I got Jojo Bizarre Adventures Stone Ocean Volume 2. And man, this is a lovely thick volume here. I'm bummed about the price increase for these as I don't like the new price for it, but I have read part one, two, and three. I still need to read four and five. And we're just continuing on the journey. I cannot wait for uh, part seven to come out, but I've thoroughly enjoyed the first three parts and I believe I'll continue that. So because that, I decided to continue collecting this series. Let's go ahead and now move on to ongoing or missing titles that I received from Yen Press. And the first being Honey Lemon Soda Volume 5. Still such a powerful and good series. I would say by volume four, you'll probably know whether or not you want to continue this series, but this is a very good shoujo series as you're following this girl who 
I came from just a, had a really bad junior high experience to the point that she decided to go to a different school for high school and try to start her life all over again. And then she meets this boy here with a lovely honey lemon soda hair. And you're like, oh my, what's gonna happen? And I think what's beautiful about this story is the idea of <clears throat> this guy's kind of helping her grow up and just be independent and a mature person on her own. And you know, at the same time, maybe developing feelings, maybe not developing feelings for this lovely male character here, where other times you'll see a character where being closer to that relationship actually makes that person worse and brings them down. So it's neat seeing her just come out of her shell and just the life lessons she's learning about herself along the way and what's gonna happen to her is she's now developing friendships that did not happen before. So very, very good shoujo series. I thoroughly enjoy the high school antics and where the story is going. I just can't help but root for this character every time. This is a bit of a tearjerker series for some people. I do get kind of sense of teary eyed when I'm reading it, but I've thoroughly enjoyed Honey Lemon Soda and just cannot wait to continue the story. Next up I picked up was Higurashi When They Cry, this continuing saga that we have here. Now if you click the right hand corner you can see my thoughts and a review on Higurashi When They Cry, the entire series itself. And then after volume 26 they kind of went and they added this new story that's continuing. I have decided to wait on reading it as I think there was five or six volumes total for the whole thing and I just where we're at right now with everything else we have going on and I think I just want to read it all at once if I can like I did here at Garashi. So uh, this is a horror story as you're trying to find out what's going to happen to these characters. Definitely not for kids but it has some very good storytelling, lots of dialogue. So again, check out my review to see whether or not this is something you'd be interested in reading. Next, I picked up with Death Mount Death Play, Volume 11, Still in a Slowly Shrink, meaning as you can tell, I have not read it yet. Definitely not for kids at all, but this is an Isekai series. I just like Isekai series. I got most of them for a really good sale. And I, let's just go and continue. But like I said earlier, it's probably one of those things I need to take a pause and probably picking up new volumes until I've read what I currently have. Next is another series I've been reflecting on why we continue picking up these volumes even though we haven't read even though people have loved the anime. They've said many good things about this story but this is volume six of Shadow House and it's actually it was the next story I was going to pick up and read before I got those 39 volumes as I have a couple series where kind of like uh, I think Dark Gathering that we looked at earlier of, hey, I have a couple of these volumes here. Let's just read those and knock them out to see if these are series I want to continue. So I haven't read this yet, which is embarrassing, but I believe I am gonna enjoy this series. So <clears throat> next up, this is on my, this is what I'm gonna read just to knock it out to see if I want to continue. Speaking of Isekai series, we got the saga of Tanya the Evil as you're following this person is reincarnated from being a military general knowing all these things and now they're surviving it out here and you're battling out and also it's probably one of the more popular Iskai series that's currently out also has a light novel edition so we have that one and you're like Scott what about any other Iskai well we do have more Iskais because Scott likes Iskais and this is Emmett's in the Shadow volume 9 now this is a more of a comedy series and really it is even though it's an Iskai now I actually didn't like the anime as much as I've loved the manga for the comedy aspect. The anime did have good, had some funny moments, but I really appreciated the action and the colors uh, from the anime. It helped to just make these panels come alive, but I feel like the jokes and just the hijinks of the story itself, I feel like it's better told through the manga. Now there's a light novel as well, which is probably the best way to experience the story, but I thoroughly enjoyed Eminence in the Shadow as I continue. I'm still having laugh out loud moments with each volume I read. And you know what, I did a review of this series as well. So if you click the eye in the right hand corner, you can see my thoughts on Eminence and Shadow. Next I picked up was The Deer King volume two. And now this is complete. It's a two volumes taking the novel itself and putting it into a manga form. And I guess the best way to describe this is the story reminds me almost like a Studio GB of a princess, um, I wanna say Monoki. Probably a butcher and I'm so sorry it's such a famous beautiful story uh, it gave me those similar vibes so if you're looking for something that gives you similar vibes to that and it's only two volumes I, I felt good with this completion I'm not sure if I want to keep and own it I don't know how many times I want to go back to it but it was a very good storytelling just build up that you're following this main character who's in the salt mines he ends up meeting this girl 
and then together they get out of that tragic situation. So I don't want to spoil it anymore, but if you if you like that Studio GB film, I think you are going to enjoy reading these two volumes. Next I picked up was apparently Dissolution Adventures will save the world, and I'll be honest with, after reading this volume, I don't know if I want to continue this series. Now, it's not an Iskai because they don't start in Iskai, but it feels like an Iskai following like an RPG. This whole volume here really felt like a side story and did not continue on. So there has been uh, funny moments in this series I, I enjoy. I enjoy the, the RJ, Japanese RPG elements in it, or the role playing elements. But come on, this is really like a side side story. If if the anime, if an anime comes out, I would honestly feel like this is almost like a filler arc. So hopefully it's not filler and we'll see something change for it and the story will progress. So I'm gonna give this one more volume and if it stays the way it is to me, it's just not worth it. I liked the first volume. I thought the second volume was okay. Third was decent, and then this one just turned me off as I just didn't feel like continuation story. It just felt like we had the side story for the sake of a side story. So we'll see what happens with it, but I did like the beginning of it. You're following these characters. They've all had something tragic happen, and now they're all working together. So if you're looking for a Japanese RPG feel isekai comedy series, this might be up your alley. But again, there are better ones out there like Eminence and Shadow. Next up is a comedy series I do enjoy. This is probably my favorite cozy series right now. If I'm really tired at the end of the day and I just want to read something that's funny and also relaxing, it is Boshi the Rock and this is volume two. Now it does seem a little thin, but there is a lot of story in this thin volume as everything is in these four panels. So tons of dialogue in each of these four panels and I went and I was at a, at a store that sold the Japanese one and Japanese ones were just as thin. So it's not like, you know, Yen Press is, you know, cutting the volume so they can spread out more and make more money is no, the Japanese ones were just as thin as these volumes here. So I thoroughly in, enjoyed this so far. I know the anime did really well. So if you're looking for a comedy series following this extremely introverted girl and she's now, tr who's also very good with the guitar and just, trying to make it and have a group of friends with a band really really good probably one of my favorite current ongoing series give me the same vibes as Comey can't communicate it's just very wholesome and funny next i picked up is tokyo babylon volume 2 this is a clamp premium edition i don't know <laughs> it doesn't feel very premium i mean it is a nice cover and then what's neat is they give you this nice little pull out poster if you want if you call that premium but it's just Tokyo Babylon. So I am really grateful that Yen Press is reprinting this. This is a prequel to uh, X, which unfortunately is on a permanent hiatus, which I don't think will ever continue. But you're following these two twins here, and then they have the the main one here has this ability to go ahead and exercise, you know, mysterious powers and things of yokai and different ghosts out there. So I'm enjoying it so far. I think there's five or six volumes total. So it's it's not the best but it's not bad so i'm going to continue reading it as i'm kind of just enjoying going ahead and reading a classical story next i picked up is delicious in the dungeon volume 13 out of 14 and i'm so glad we have a release date for 14 that is the final volume of the series i picked up most of the series all at once so that's why i haven't read it yet I, the anime i know did extremely well this winter I, I see on many people's number one anime, so I'm looking forward to go ahead and reading this manga. Once I get volume 14, I'm just gonna read it all at once. Next I picked up is Tomb Raider King. This is volume six. This is that very ego, high narcissist of any main character I've seen. Although he seems to have a little bit of heart, but if you're look kind of like a very popcorn series, for some reason it's a guilty pleasure, which I still just enjoy reading the series. It gives me similar vibes of Soul Leveling. It's not as good as Soul Leveling, but you're following this main character who ends up at the end of his life, things do not go well, and then somehow he's able to go back into the past, I think 15 years, and now he can change everything, knowing what he knows now. So things just continue to go well and well and well for him. He just keeps one-upping everybody, and I wish there was some kind of tragedy or something where he gets stuck, where he actually knocks him down a couple pegs. I think that might be good for the main character, but. It's just fun, it's just fun. For some reason, I enjoy seeing him win over and over again. So I don't know why it's a guilty pleasure for that way, but if you're looking for a guilty pleasure where you just know he's gonna 
<laughs> destroy them every time in some way in some hysterical way and it is interesting seeing the artifacts he finds as you get to learn a little bit about um, some history and then looking up online like oh this is actually legit about some of these artifacts and about that person so it's that's made it fun so far so i thoroughly enjoy even though i don't know why i enjoy it but tomb raider king next i picked up which is probably one of my son's favorite series right now and that is overgear volume two as this is your it feels ishikai is but there is a real world and then what people do is they play this this video game kind of like a ready player one this feels very similar vibes to ready player one as you're following this character who he has this ability to make awesome equipment so very very funny thoroughly enjoyed and again uh, my son who is going to be turning 12 soon he absolutely loves this story uh, my daughter who who is 12, who's gonna be turning 13. She enjoys the story as well. I'm enjoying it. So if you're looking for something around that lines, if you like Ready Player One, this is one you'll probably enjoy as well. Except for we don't have the lovely pop culture references which made Ready Player One just so nostalgia. Next I picked up is The Remarried Empress Volume Five. And wow, after I read this volume, I immediately wanted Volume Six. This is such a good story. There's a reason why this is one of the number one webtoon series. If you've not checked out, you've got to read the story itself as you're following this main princess here who, sorry, queen, the empress. And then what happened is that her lovely husband decides to add a mistress to his life. And now this mistress, things are going on with her and she's just not going to put up with it. I don't want to spoil the story if you've read it, but so, so good. I just hands down one of my favorite ongoing series I'm currently reading. I cannot wait to find out what's going to happen in volume six. Next is another story that seems to get better with each volume, even though volume one was also very good. And that is the boxer from our lovely eyes press line. Like the last couple ones I've showed you as you're following this main character who is now this really good boxer. And what's probably in probably the best about this story is you're seeing the perspectives of each opponent and you end up starting to root for the underdog. I am now rooting for the main character instead. I'm now rooting for his opponents and you just don't want to give up the hope. You just fall in love with these characters and you want to see them do well and you want to see them do better. So such a phenomenal story. I just, this is the best volume yet. And according to Eyes Press, which is kind of biased because they're the publisher, they said, if you love volume five, wait till volume six comes out. So. I'm looking forward to, it, to hold them to it, and I hope that one's gonna be even better than this one. Next from the Eyes Press line is Soul Leveling Volume 8. Wow, this is a new arc coming things together here. Now it's starting to annoy me a little bit that the main character, just his ego, is becoming more and more closer to Tomb Raider King, which he did not have in the beginning. I know the anime has done very well that came out, but I'm still enjoying the series and I like where it's going right now. So if you've read it so far, it's, you're just getting more of that in spades and it's just very interesting to continue along where it's headed. So it's one of my favorite current series, another guilty pleasure one that I just keep coming back to over and over. Next, I end up picking up Jungle Juice Volume 2 and Volume 3. This is a series about humans that had this lovely bug spray but when they sprayed that bug to kill all of a sudden the dna of the bug they sprayed gets into them and now you have this cross of these part human part insect society and they're just trying to make it out in the world and what do you do in that situation well it's kind of like x-men where <laughs> instead of mutants you have people who are part insects and there's a school they go to and there are other secret societies that are trying to destroy that school. I would say it's very much like an X-Men but with insect powers instead of um, these other mutations. So if that intrigues you, it's one you might want to check out. I will say I do thoroughly love the artwork for it. The artwork is very good but is a very battle comic fighting series and you're hoping to find out what's going to happen with some of these characters. Uh, there's definitely some funny moments with it. So yeah, it feels like it just like I'm reading an X-Men comic, but instead it's a manhwa with these people that can turn into insects. I'm going to continue reading the series. It's one I've enjoyed, but I mean, there are, there are better things. There are better series out there, but it's one I am enjoying. I will, I'll go ahead and I'll continue and give at least a couple more volumes. And last from the eyes press line is the horizon volume three. This continues that entire story 
I was very impressed with Eyes. I think all three volumes came out last year. So for them to put it all at once, I was very impressive, which this finished that story and I, I did feel complete with the story itself. It's a very, very tragic story, definitely not for kids, but I thought they did a good job telling just the aftermath of war, what that's like, and you just felt really just the meaning and, and connection in three volumes you have with these characters. So. There's not a lot of dialogue with this story, but when the dialogue does happen, you do feel the weight of the words. But you're just following panel after panel as, as this boy and this girl are trying to make it and just survive in this world and just the aftermath of war itself. So very good, sad story, but very powerful storytelling in just three volumes. Let's go ahead and now check out ongoing or missing titles that I received from Kandansha with the first being the Sugumi Project Volume 4. Now, what's interesting with this series, this post-apocalyptic series, is it's very action, very fast read, but I appreciate the fourth volume actually made me want to continue the series, that after the third one, I wasn't sure. So you're following a main character who ends up getting dumped into this post-apocalyptic radiation world in what Japan used to be, and he's this mercenary that's trying to survive and he has to get to this project area and if he gets the mission complete his life is free so you're finding these characters now where you have this person here you know it looks kind of like an apish person that's crossed with like a rooster feet and that per they're very intelligent creatures so you have these mutations that have happened around this post-apocalyptic world they're trying to survive and as some characters may not appear who they are they're intelligent but are they lying to them or trying to backstab them so i've i've actually enjoyed it so far and i'm going to continue on with the story next i picked up is fire force volume 9 of the omnibus three in ones i think 11 is the last one of this but I do appreciate when you put the spines together to tell a, a complete story this is from the same author that gave us Soul Eater so if you probably have already read Fire Force you may have seen the anime so if that is already in your line I just I wanted to get the omnibuses and I thought it was just such a good deal for getting the whole complete story and I appreciate the larger trim compared to what the trim size was for the singles. Let's go ahead and now move on to smaller publishers, which I feel <laughs> that I should have put seven C's, probably should have its own category now instead of putting it in smaller publishers because there's a lot more seven C's here than I did have Kandansha, but we'll see if that continues and we'll add that as a category instead of putting it with smaller publishers. So I do apologize, but first is a certain scientific railgun volume 18. I this is one of those things where I wanted to get an overarching of the story from the light novels, just get the manga edition. So we have the railgun, we have the accelerator, we have a magical index, we have the Astro Buddy. So I just wanted to get a complete package of the series. So I have not read certain time to put railgun yet, which I should shame on me seeing there's only like one volume a month. I'm sorry, one volume a year we get of the railgun and they continue this story i wonder how long it's going to take to finish old testament since the new testament has already come out for the story in the light novels itself but from my understanding we still have a long ways to go next i picked up from seven seas as well is the ancient mongus bride volume 19 they say if you love witch hat atelier this is a series that you're going to enjoy so because i end up picking most of the volumes up together and i just continue to pick it up even though i've not sadly started the story yet. the next volume i picked up is dia dark volume 6 from dark horse this is from the same author that gave us doro hidoro now this is probably extremely controversial because we only have six volume so far but i think i might like this better than doro di doro i finished doro Dioro not too long ago with all 23 volumes and i have some mixed feelings about it but the, i mean the artwork is incredible the artwork is incredible here i just i like the storytelling of what's going on here as you're following these main characters there's very very funny moments in it just like doro hidoro where uh very dark humor <laughs> where you're seeing the where maybe you shouldn't be laughing at the tragic events happening to some of these characters, but for some reason it's funny. So they've done a really good job with this world and this main character who the rumor is that if you can capture their bones, you, any wish will come true. And just so funny seeing the backdrop, seeing the connections as you're following some of them, you get to see what happened to them in the past as maybe their name was Meatball Spaghetti, maybe it wasn't. So it, it's been very, very funny. I've thoroughly enjoyed where the series is going. And it's sad we only get one volume a year, which 
kind of makes sense i think i believe it's a monthly manga so i think volume seven might have recently came out in japan so we'll probably see that by the end of next year but i've thoroughly enjoyed this so far next i picked up from seven seas kimono Jin volume nine and i got volume 10 and wow man, volume 10 alone so this is a story i almost dropped it as i was feeling it was okay but i'm actually very glad that i've continued on and I feel good enough just with volume 10 alone to make me feel satisfied with the series as these two characters, these two villains alone have just so much interesting story behind them and who they are and just the, how twisted they are. This is definitely not for kids, this story, but wow, you're following, you're following these main, these main characters that have each one. is like a different beast. So you have people, humans that can turn to foxes. Um, humans that can turn into tanuki, which are rat raccoons, uh, people that can turn part fish, part human, and then you have humans around as well. So very, very, as you follow at first, is this kind of like this detective agency where they're trying to help different people. And then this big arc that they started a few volumes ago as they're looking for all these stones and connect them together, which is, you know, kind of a typical trope, but what happens along the way has just been so good. And it has some sprinkle of comedy moments that you do have a few moments that you're just laughing out loud. So I haven't felt this way about two main characters since, uh, for villains since Naruto. Just how twisted they are I don't want to spoil it, but they they did a really, the author did a really good job with these two villains where you feel ill and you're like, oh, that is a twisted villain. And you don't see that too, too well where I'm saying, man, if I got to say these are some villains to watch out for, just the, how psycho they are, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, the author has done a very good job. So I'm so glad I continued on with the story that I almost dropped on the fifth volume. And, I gotta say, I'm glad I continued on, even if the story didn't get better. Reading this alone and seeing how these characters, which I think we'll see more of them in the next volume, has made this whole thing worth the journey. Next, I picked up one of the most popular animes currently out now, and that is the Apocrypha Diaries Volume 11. Now, I got the whole series on a lovely white stuff anime sale when everything was very affordable. I just have not started the series yet, sadly, due to the backlog of everything else, but it's one I need to read right away and decide, do I want to continue? But I have a feeling, I've just heard so many good things about this. I have a feeling it's one I'm going to enjoy as well. Next I got is the last volume from One Piece. That is Hinamashiri Volume 19, and it is a thick conclusion final volume. Now this whole series was on a lovely right stuff anime sale before they were bought out. Usually every summer winter sale, the whole series was on sale. So because I had almost all the series, I decided, you know what, we're so close to the end. Let's just wait till we get the last volume and we can read all together. And then I can write a lovely review for you to check out talking about the series. Next I picked up is everyone's favorite, kind of like if you like One Punch Man, this is their other series that they did. And that is Mob Psycho 100 volume 13 with the lovely broccoli in the background. Now the anime is finished with the with the three seasons and it was just so well done and i think i believe there's 15 volumes in total for this or dark horse it's just taking them a very long time to go ahead and have them come out but very very funny as you're following this main character with all these psychic powers i recommend the anime i thought the anime was very well done and so i just felt at the same time i needed to get the original source material and go ahead and grab the manga as well next i picked up from square enix is soul eater volume 13 the perfect edition of this Sadly, mine isn't perfect, as you see here, this lovely little white. <sighs> but that is okay. If I push it here, you can't really see it too much, and it didn't destroy the integrity of the other thing. This is from that same author that we talked about that made Fire Force. This is their first one they made, Soul Eater. I just thought the perfect edition was so well done. That's the way I had to get it, even though there are the singles you can get from Yen Press. But and go to a store and compare the two, and I'm just, wow. They did such a good job with the, the weight. The binding, the hard covers, I like how glossy and shiny is. So because of that, I went ahead and went this route to pick up the series. And last from Small Publishers is one of my favorite ongoing series physically, even though digital is done and I know a lot of people do not like it just to the ending, but this story has me on the edge of my seat each time. I just cannot wait for the next volume. There's many moments where even with this volume, my jaw dropped and that is Tokyo Revengers, the two in one. This is volume 17, 18. Wow, I think there was 31 volumes total. I'm very, very grateful for Seven Seas to go ahead and publish this, but I'm just like, oh, what is gonna happen next? There's times where 
something happens and I have to take a look back and like, did I really read what I just read? Did I really see what I saw? The weight, the panels, as you're following this main character who has the ability to go into the past, 13 years in the past and relive his life. And he's trying to save this girl. The, the, the only love he had in his life, he, in the future she ends up dying from a car accident and he's trying to see maybe somebody intentionally tried to have it, have it out for her. So he's going to the past and trying to rewrite history. And every time he goes back into the future, things are actually worse, not better. So, so, so good for, for those who don't know what happens. I highly recommend this. This is such a phenomenal storytelling, so gripping of a story. Let's go ahead and check out new to me titles. And instead of doing separate for Viz, Yen Press, Condoncha, small publishers, we'll just do them all at once as I apologize. I know this video is already getting kind of long. And the last, if you click the right hand corner, you can go ahead and you can see my video where I go in depth in these titles of new volume one releases, which is all that these new to me are. So with that, the first one we got from Viz is Ace of Story One Piece. I love One Piece, so I wanted to go ahead and check out Ace's the Side Story. Then from Yen Press, from the Eyes Press line is the Omission Reader's Viewpoint. Here's volume one. And we got volume two, terrific series. If you like Soul Leveling, you're gonna like this and you might like it even more. Again, I have more details about this story as well. As well as we have, which I will butcher every time, which I apologize, it's a uh, Gachukata. Uh, I know that's wrong, I apologize. This is, they say, if you like Attack on Titan, you might like this as well. As you're following this main character who ends up uh, not having a good life and then and it lives in this sky city and gets kicked out of the sky city and it is very mysterious world so that video will tell you a little bit more about what i thought of that and then probably one of the best things i've read in a really long time probably is going to make my easy my top 10 or my number one a best new series for 2024 and that is the medalist this is one you've got to check out my video will explain exactly why you'll want to go ahead and read more of that and last, this is Smaller Publishers from Square Enix. We got Smokey behind the supermarket with you. I really appreciate the thicker volume with this as some Square Enixes lately have been very, very thin. But this is an, an adult sort of romantic comedy series. You're following this main character here who's down on his luck. And then there's this beautiful girl at the supermarket that just makes his day after working a very long shift. So. I've thoroughly enjoyed it so far. I thought this was really good. So that's everything I picked up for the month of March. If you'd like to see more content like this and you've not done so already, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. That helps others know about this community that we have built. We are a small, but we are a strong and mighty community. I'm so grateful for each of you because of you as help encourage and can help me to continue on showing and being part of this community and this journey together. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.